Well, hey, G Holla, G Dot Holla. Bro, G E Holla, Charlemagne the God here, man. Salute to you. Okay. Shout out to G Holla, reaching 1 million listeners on his podcast. Hey, a shout out to G Holla. Oh, y'all said entertainer. Shout out my guy, G Holla, of my Celebrity Life Podcast. It's your girl, Cynthia Bailey from The Real Housewives of Atlanta, and I'm sending a shout out to G Holla. Freedom song. And um, uh, kind of before that, just so you know a little bit about my history, uh, my family and um, my community are rooted in civil rights activism. So my godfather, Jim Wells, who is now deceased, was um, a part of civil rights history. Uh, he was a part of the Friendship Nine, which was a uh, sit-in that was staged um, by nine black male uh, college students at Friendship uh, College um, in my hometown, Rock Hill, South Carolina, and that sit-in made national news uh, back in the day. Um, and then fast forward to hashtag hope, all the stuff that was going on last year during the pandemic. Um, and when we saw George Floyd murdered in the streets, once again, saying the same words that Eric Garner had said, I can't breathe. Um, I was personally convicted. I know a lot of people were outraged. We were hurt. Um, and I felt like the world needed healing. Um, and so, um, I felt led to put the song out publicly because I had written it several years ago and I was like, man, I mean, this is like, you know, deja vu because this situation is still happening. It's like the, it's a, a recurring theme. Um, and so uh, when I released the song, Hashtag Hope, we put that out. Um, and big shouts also to Killer Mike. Um, the speaking in the beginning is him addressing actually Atlanta. And I thought it's so fitting. So I put that on the, on the beginning and his team approved me uh, releasing the song with, uh, with his with his message um, of talking about giving the people hope. And so um, then moving forward to the remix, um, I sent the track to David Banner. And Banner being Banner was like, yo, uh, send me the instrumental. <laughs> and so um, I sent it to him. And what I love about the remix is that um, when you listen to his verse versus um, my vocal, um, it's, it's like uh, modern day Malcolm X meeting with Dr. Martin Luther King, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King was about, you know, peaceful activism and, uh, you know, peaceful protests. And Malcolm uh, had a different perspective. Um, it was pretty much, if you hit me, I'm gonna hit you back, you know? And uh, so that's kind of the angle that Banner came from. And I love that because it's true um, in our community. I don't think that, you know, we should condemn somebody or judge somebody for how they feel. Um, because when you see somebody that looks like you gunned down in the street or, you know, just whatever, profiled, you know, um, we're angry, you know, but also um, my job to me, what I feel responsible for as a recording artist is to um, make sure that people also heal because these these incidents that where we see, you know, it's just not, you know, um, uh, Eric Garner or uh, George Floyd is Ahmaud Arbery. Um, Breonna Taylor, so many people um, that we continue to see that look, and that's traumatic. Um, and so I think the hashtag hope is really about um, also encouraging not just to deconstruct systemic racism, but also to encourage us to heal. So that's uh, what hashtag hope responsible is for the things that they've done to people in the street, whether they be police officers or peace officers or whomever. How important is it for people to really understand what hope really is to you? Well, me personally as a believer, of course, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, you know, righteousness. But at the same time, in this country, um, as an artist um, and as uh, somewhat of an activist, um, it's not necessarily my job to, to to change. You know, I can't make somebody change their, their ideology or how they think, but I do want to be able to, you know, present them with... Um, you know, my experiences and also just share the wisdom that I feel like I've, you know, can where I can. Um, I do believe that systemic racism is alive and well in this country. I mean, you see um, how certain things, the insurrection that happened January 6th um, is something that people in the black community, we know, you know, it, we dare not try to do something like that. Like it would have been a massacre. Um, and so that also just is a, an example of the, the blatant privilege um, that sometimes we, um, and the division in the country as well. Um, I saw a post earlier today where, you know, uh, somebody was saying how, you know, 
both sides are equally upset. And that's, that's it's, it's ironic. Um, and so hopefully, you know, music is a universal language of love. And so back to the lyric, back to the song, hashtag hope. What I'm doing is not trying to create even more division, but it's really trying to create more unity. It's trying to create more community. It's trying to create more awareness around what's going on. Um, and I think that, you know, knowledge is power and, and music is powerful. So if you put those two things together, um, imagine what we can do together. And agreement is powerful, too. So I think that it, within our community, us coming together for a common goal, I think racism is the common denominator that we're trying to deconstruct. And if we can start to uh, heal and also work on creating policy changes um, that reflect um, things that we are looking for as a community, I think that's um, some of the beginning st stages to healing and, and fixing systemic racism. I love that. I appreciate that. I just want to highlight something out of that right quick. You said putting people together and bringing folks together. I'm talking to um, your publicists and your people behind the scenes right now because I'm in contact with uh, one of the family members, actually George Floyd's brother, and he's been going on tour trying to get out the word about you know what's going on with the family because it's a deeper story even behind that when it comes to the government and how they're trying to treat the family. So. I hope we can right. connect and make that happen too. Now for my second right. question, you know what I'm saying? I want to keep it a little fun if I may. Okay. I, you know, okay, let's check out the number seven. The number seven is a very blessed and holy number throughout all religion and spirituality. You find the number seven. Even the seventh letter of the alphabet is G. G could be God. G could be grand architect, could be goddess, whatever that you're into, whatever that you respectfully, you know, worship too. So in this case, Mr. Ruby, we're going to stamp you with the number seven. With that being said, the number seven being a very holy number in spirituality and in religion and Christianity, I want to ask you, we're going on a Hope World Tour. And because you're stamped with that number seven, you have the powers of what we consider God or the creator or the divine. I would like for you to put together a Hope World Tour. However, you're only required to have seven artists of all time that you would take with you. So if I may ask, even the ones that, that have passed away, like a Prince or a Michael Jackson, because you have the power of the seven, you can bring them back to life for your Hope World Tour. Which seven artists throughout all the time are you resurrecting and also just bringing back in general? Oh, my gosh. Well, first of all, seven is my favorite number, of course. <laughs> and, um, you know, seven is, you know, God's perfect number as well. So I, I, I can dig seven. Uh, that's so hard, y'all, because I, I love... <laughs> I just love good music, but uh, let's see. The Clark Sisters, I'm a huge fan. I already said that, so that's one. Donny Hathaway, um, love Donny. I cover, uh, you know, some of his music as well. Um, oh, man. Prince and Michael, so that's four, okay. right? Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's go into different genres. I love the Bee Gees. Uh. Um, you know, uh, let's see. Uh, James Taylor. Okay. Six, okay. and he's from the Carolinas. Okay. Uh, I, I cover a lot of his music as well. Uh, man, mm. and then uh, it's hard. Birdman rubs hands while you're getting it together. Right. I'm gonna <laughs> just say Whitney. Okay. You know, Whitney. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> I will always love Whitney. <laughs> Hey, what she say? I'll always love you. So, you know, hey, that connection is already there. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Salute to you. Long live and everything that you do. And I hope that a hundred million, whatever time has that goes forward in the future, your name will be forever spoken and the children in the future will discover and find you. And I appreciate you and salute you, my good brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Blessings. Thank you so much. Y'all let me know. Can you hear the... um? Can you hear the keys? I hope to see tomorrow. Hope it's better than today. Hope my brothers and sisters won't have to live being afraid. Yeah. Hope that mothers and fathers will live to see the day. They don't have to bury their children. Hashtag hope, hope to see tomorrow, hope is brighter than today, I hope I live to see my children, and my children's children graduate, 
I hope the innocent remain innocent. I hope the guilty are convicted. And when I say that I can't breathe, I hope somebody listens. Cause all we have is hope. Hashtag hope. You can hashtag hope. When you back up against the road, you can hashtag hope. Cause people are dying, the whole world's crying. If you agree with me, hashtag all we have is hope. Hashtag hope. Mm. Hashtag hope. So that's hashtag hope, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Also, um, uh, super excited because the song was just featured on the NBA All Stars opening uh, segment. I released the song right after the the pandemic hit, and I was like, oh, you know, at first I'm like, I don't know, you know, uh, God, I'm just gonna trust you, you know, but I'm gonna release the song. I know I'm supposed to be releasing the song, and. Um, the response to the song was just overwhelming because um, so many people were hurting, people were isolated, sheltering in place, you know, social distancing, losing loved ones. I've lost uh, two aunts during the pandemic, and it, they weren't COVID-19 related deaths, but um, COVID-19 impacted the way we celebrated their lives. Um, People are experiencing financial hardship and difficulties, losing jobs. Um, some people are experiencing higher levels of anxiety and depression and even contemplating suicide. And so I Belong Here speaks to all of those people and everybody that's dealing with something, dealing with identity, you know, struggling to find community, feeling alone. Um, so the song took on a bigger, more powerful, universal revelation and a bigger message. And so I'm grateful for that. Um, as an indie artist, you know, the journey to number one on the Billboard charts um, was amazing. It was a fight. I'm going to be honest. You know, it's a, such a super competitive slot. Um, but not only did we land uh, the number one spot, and it happened to be on my birth birthday, which is amazing, um, but also we stayed there for two consecutive weeks, which is very, very rare. And the second week, um, we hit number one. Also, I landed the number one spot on the Billboard Gospel Songwriter chart, which is a newer chart. And so I'm only the sixth songwriter um, to be on that chart, which includes amazing writers like Kurt Franklin. So um, with that being said, um, even beyond having a number one song, I'm grateful that God would give me this message that would heal so many people um, and just carry people through this pandemic. So I'm going to sing a little bit of uh, I Belong Here and then uh, we can do whatever Leslie and, and Marley says is, is next. So here we go. I Belong Here. My favorite part of the song is this. For somebody like you to love somebody like me. For somebody like you just to include me. You could have left me out, but you wouldn't have me that way. Said 
The sound that saved a race mm, like me. I once was lost, now I'm found. I, I was blind, but now I see that there is a place for you. Thank you.